Hello there and welcome to this video on the Taste 8 Black Wolf. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the regulator of the rifle as well as giving you some information on it. Now before we begin, the main and key takeaway of this rifle should be that the Black Wolf features an externally adjustable regulator and we can increase the regulator pressure whilst the rifle is pressurized nice and safely. However, if we ever need to reduce the regulator pressure, we would first need to fully degas the rifle. With that said, we can get on to the adjustment procedure, and the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the rifle is safe by first cocking the rifle, removing the single shot loader or magazine if one has been fitted, then we can dry fire the rifle into a nice safe backstop. All that does is ensure there's not a pellet loaded into the barrel. The next thing we're going to do is make a note of the factory regulator setting, just in case we ever need to go back to the factory settings at a later date. With both of those jobs done, we should be safe to continue. And the next thing I want to mention is that adjusting the regulator is slightly different between the sub-12 and high-power rifles. On the high-power rifles, if we flick the rifle up, locate this hole in the bottom and take a quick look inside it, you can see that we have the regulator adjuster screw available to us. On high power rifles you can adjust the regulator pressure whilst the action is inside the stock by the use of a nice thin flat baited screwdriver. What you would do is install the screwdriver through the hole, get it lined up with the slot in the adjuster screw, then nice and carefully wind the screw out to increase regulator pressure. Now as this rifle here is a sub 12 pound rifle, there is a small anti-tamper device installed into the head of the adjuster screw, so we can't use a flat bladed screwdriver on a sub 12 pound rifle. To make it a little easier to view for the video and to show you what you need to do, I'm going to be removing the action from the stock. First thing I'll do is remove the safety. Then with that done, we can remove the stock bolt in the bottom. Then we can put the stock over to one side and I'll get you a quick look at the adjuster screw. So that piece there, that black piece in the center of the adjuster screw is the anti-tamper device. Although we can still adjust the regulator, we just need to use a slightly different tool. What I'm going to be doing is using a set of tweezers. So to adjust the regulator, all we would need to do is insert the tweezers or flat bladed screwdriver into the adjuster screw, then turn the adjuster screw anti-clockwise to adjust the regulator pressure. And as you can see there, the regulator pressure is slowly rising. At the moment, this particular regulator has been set a little low at just over 50 bar. And what I want to do is increase it to 100 bar. What I'm going to do is use my tweezers to rotate the adjuster screw anti-clockwise. That's around a quarter of a turn. So about 25 bar of adjustment there. And what we're going to do is slowly creep up on the pressure that we would like. Once we get close, what I'm going to do is dry fire the rifle about half a dozen or so times into a nice safe backstop to cycle the regulator and let it settle down. After around half a dozen or so shots, the regulator should settle down slightly and the rig pressure will probably drop. So what we're going to need to do now is just continue our adjustment procedure until we reach the pressure that we're after. After a couple cycles of adjustment, you can see that we've hit our target of 100 bar nicely. So I'm happy with the regulator adjustment there. I can now put the action back in the stock and start shooting the rifle. If at any point in your adjustment you overshoot your target say for example we set this to 110 bar as opposed to 100 bar what we'd need to do is degas the rifle fully that would be done by first using a deep 10 millimeter socket to loosen this foster fitting on the bottom of the rifle we would need to crack that loose and wait for it to start hissing at which point we would simply need to let the rifle fully degas and after the hissing stopped we would check both the regulator pressure gauge this one here as well as the air pressure gauge this one here making sure that both of them were reading zero 
Once both gauges are reading zero, we would then come into our adjuster, this one here, and wind it in, so clockwise. What you would do is wind the screw in a little more than you think you need to, and then when you repressurize the rifle, you can readjust the regulator by winding the adjusting screw out or counterclockwise. Another thing to keep in mind when you're making your adjustments is that the regulator pressure can never exceed the cylinder or bottle pressure. So it's always best to do the adjustments with plenty of air inside the cylinder or bottle. But with that said, that's the adjustment procedure for the regulator. The key things to keep in mind is that turning the adjuster screw counterclockwise or undoing it increases our rig pressure and that can be done safely whilst the rifle is pressurized. If we ever need to decrease the regulator pressure, we first need to fully degas the rifle, make sure both gauges are reading zero. Once that's done, we can then wind the adjuster screw clockwise or in. Typically speaking, you would go a little further in than you think you need to. Then when you pressurize the rifle, the regulator pressure will be low, at which point you can safely increase the regulator pressure to your chosen setting. With that said, the last thing we can do is get the action put back in the stock, and that's nice and simple to do. The first thing we'll do is slide the stock over, and we can install our stock bolt. Install our filler cap, then we can put the safety back in. With that all said and done, that's the regulator adjustment procedure outlined for the Daystate Black Wolf. On the Daystate YouTube channel, we do also have a full service guide for this particular regulator, so if you need to service your regulator, we do have a full guide for that as well. But with that all said and done, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been interesting or useful. I'll see you in the next one.